build it right. Build it right. Build it right. All right. We were reading um, Second Chronicles chapter three, and we were talking about Solomon building the temple. So I want to ask you a question: What happens when a time comes for you to walk out your purpose? You got. We talked about. God has a plan for you. We talked about Solomon and David and, and Jonathan and who, what kind of leader you want to be. We talked about Naomi and Ruth and their purpose. We talked about so many different things. And God is going to have you tell you this and God is going to tell you that. But what happens when you have all the plans and you know what you're about to do? What happens when God put the crown on your head and now you're the king? What happens when you do have the power and have the authority? What happens when you do have the degree you've been waiting for and fighting for? What happens when you do have the money that you need to do everything you have to do? What happens when you have a plan, have a blueprint, have the materials? You know, you can get anxiety about what do I do? What if I do the wrong thing? You might want not want to take a step because you might say, well, that step is in the wrong direction. Um, I don't know which step I'm supposed to go, but I'd rather just stand still. You might think that sometimes, that okay, I have the money, but I don't want to make the wrong move. I have this, but I, have, I don't want to make the wrong move. You can be tripped up in your mind like, I, I'm so scared. I have a fear of failure, fear of success. I don't know what to do when I am successful. Will they, will they walk away from me? Will they say I sold out? Will they, they, they turn their back on me? Will they say I didn't help them enough? We have all kinds of fears. What do you do when you know what your goal is and how you want to get it done? What do you do when he gives you the position, the acceptance letter, the offer letter, the title? That's something to get happy about, amen? Amen. Because that's a good problem to have. Good problem to have. What, what do you do when you've prayed and you've fasted and you ask for wisdom? And God spoke to you and told you what to do. What's next? What do you do? Tell your neighbor, build it right. Build it right. Solomon found himself where he was, he, his father fought for him as a kingdom. He got to be king. Okay, yes, he was anointed and everything like that. But then his father had to be, make him the king. And he had everything at his at his beck and call. He had everything that he needed, but what, what we talked about this, he asked for what? What did he ask for when he got to be king? Wisdom. Wisdom. He asked for wisdom. That's the first thing. Had. I have everything in the world. What's the first thing I need? Wisdom. What do you do when you become, when you make the money you want to make, whether it's 50,000, six figures, a million, 10 million, a billion dollars, what do you do? What do you need? You need wisdom. Because you didn't get that for yourself. God did not trust you with that for just you. You have people to take care of. You have things that God asked you to do. You have things that people wanted to do before you, but you, they could not do it. They did not qualify, but you qualify. What happens if God say, I want you to go build a house right now? I want, I want you to go build a community. I want you to go and take care of all these people. These homeless people on the street. What what happens when you do that? What do you where do you start? Will you back away and say, no, I have to just take care of myself, I'll be okay? Did he just secure his kingdom? No. He said, I'm gonna do what God asked me to do for the people. That's my job. I'm gonna do my job. But I need wisdom first before I step into anything. So the first thing Solomon found himself doing is setting a foundation. So when you build a house, the first thing you need to do is lay the foundation, right? Yes. All right. So around the way, they are building a, 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 a structure, and it's been like dirt for a long time because it's cold outside. But lately, when it got a little sunny, all of a sudden, you know, it was taking months and months and months for them to just move a little dirt to the side and move a little dirt to the side. I don't know what they were doing, if they were measuring, whatever. It was too cold. They didn't want to work, obviously, because the first week it was hot. I promise you that everything was laid down. They brought in this, they brought in that. They had all these workers. They got beans up. They got this and everything going because they had already laid the foundation. So it's very important. Once you lay the foundation, things can go 
quicker. So Solomon had a relationship with God. What is your foundation? Are you based on what, having a relationship with God? How good is your relationship with him? Because if you have a cracky, shaky foundation, you're going to have problems. Your house will fall down as soon as the first storm hit. If you see why people fall apart when something happens to them, they can go all the way to the top. I don't care who you are. They can be the best, highest paid entertainer in the world. But if their foundation is not right, you see their house crack crumbling all the way down. For somebody else that did not even have enough, they are able to sustain the same storm because they have a foundation. They have their relationship with God. He knew God on an intimate level. He knew God. He, he could talk to him. He knew him on a first name basis. He was talking to him daily. He was waiting and watching for answers. Because how do you say, can I have some wisdom, and then you don't know how to find it. You don't know what God is saying, and, and yet you have the wisdom. Tyler Perry, when he begins to write his movies or his TV shows or have a writing session, the first thing he does is pray. Talk to God. And then he knows that his prayer is answered by why he, when he starts to write and it starts to flow faster than he's getting it. He can't type it fast enough. That's how he knows his prayers have been answered. He asked God, what do you want to say? Do you ask God, what do you want to say to me? How do you want this to happen? How do you want me to spend this? What do you want me to do? Journaling. We talked about journaling before. It's spending time with God and actually writing down the conversation that you have with God. But it requires faith. And it requires patience. First, you need faith to know that, hey, God is talking to me. I believe you, God, and I'm going to keep this piece of paper right here as evidence that God is talking to me. The thing that journaling does is helps you to remember what God said. So you have to make sure that you are journaling and you just write it down and say, God, what would you like to say to me? And you hear what he has to say, and you write it down. But it requires patience. We don't have a lot of patience to do it. We get up in the morning, we get ourselves together, we walk out the door. We forget to pray, we forget to read our Bible, we forget to journal. But yet we want power, and yet we want a great day, right? We all want a good day, we all want a miracle to happen. But you have to do, you have to lay down the foundation for your day. You have to lay down the foundation for your week. When you come to church, what do you think it does? If you go to ever, if you get to a place where you always have to, you come and you get filled up and filled up, after a while, when you go two weeks, you're like, wait a minute, something's not right. My, my, it feels like everything's falling apart now. I, I need to get myself right back where I need to go. I need to go back to church. I need to get filled up. I need to be in this presence or throughout the week. If I wasn't getting something on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, because the devil want to whip you on Monday morning. Amen? Amen. Wherever you go, whatever you do, God, that, that was way like, oh, really? You want to go pray on Sunday? I got you on Monday. Don't worry. By Monday night, you're like, oh, Lord, I need somewhere to go. I need something, Lord. Help me. You know? So Bible study is important. Prayer is important. To get you through the week, you got to be able to have a relationship with God. And that you don't say hi. I'm going to say hi to, what if you live with your husband or your wife or your mom and you said hi to them once a week? Would that make sense? You pass them by all the time. Like, mm, I don't know you. I don't know you. And then something, hi, how you doing? Yeah, you know, it's great. I had a great time. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. You can't have a relationship with somebody and then you can't speak to them for a whole week. A whole week go by. And the only little thing, only little time you have, and you you don't even treasure that time. You don't even take it seriously, but then you want to have a great relationship. You want to have all these benefits. Yes, I want this, I want that. But we got to make sure that we treat them right. Amen? Amen? You have to fix your eyes on Jesus when you're trying to journal, and you have to write down exactly what you hear. These are things that you do if you want to have wisdom. I have done that myself to help me navigate through things that I didn't know that were going to happen. God, how is this going to play out? What is going to happen? Sometimes you just get so anxious. You don't know what's going to happen. So ask God. Why not? You don't need to ask a psychic. God gave everybody their gift. So why not ask the source? Don't ask something that's historical.
sorted and filtered in, in, in the wrong direction and halfway. You only get it in part. So why would you get the whole part from God? Amen? Solomon's relationship with God prepared him for upcoming challenges. Your foundation is set to, so you can be ready. If it's going to be a flood, if it's going to be a hurricane, that foundation is set to withstand a lot of different things. The next thing you need to do is build a team. Solomon had to get somebody with some skill. He got a master craftsman. He didn't design it by himself and say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and get me a hammer, get me a saw, it's gonna be on a pocket. No, he did not. He got somebody that was an expert at what he did. He got somebody that, everybody can't play the same role. Somebody's gotta build the house. Somebody's gotta sit back and say, yes, I want that, I don't want that. Solomon did that. He had, if you had a house, you would get a skilled contractor. He also got laborers. Solomon made arrangements. You read the text that he got arrangements. He, he got a lot of people to have forced labor. They were the one lifting up the beam. They were the one doing the work. If you watch a construction site, you got one guy looking at all the blueprints, plant blueprints, just watching everybody else, and then everybody else is working. They all know their part. They all know what to do. God needs laborers to build His ministry. God needs laborers to build his church. God needs laborers to build his kingdom. Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to be a laborer for God? All you have to do is open up your mouth. You don't have to swing a hammer. You don't have to preach to anybody. All you gotta do is invite people out. Invite them and say, oh, I have this thing that I want you to come to. I want that thing. And then let the Holy Spirit do the work. But if you don't give them the invitation, people are not gonna bust through the door. And, and be somewhere they never were asked to go. But God is using you so you can encourage people out there. God is using you so you can help them to know, hey, I have a solution to your problem. I can't fix your problem. I can't give you all the money you need. I can't give you all the clothes you desire. I can't give you houses. I can't give you cars. But I can give you Jesus. Amen? Amen. I can give you Jesus. And he can give you all the things that you needed. If there was no one working, there would be no temple. If there's nobody working, then there'll be no people. There'll be no building. There'll be no structure. There'll be no house. You have to get some materials. Solomon used wood. He, if you wanted to, um, and after he used wood, he put the gold on top of it. There's materials that you need when, you gotta do, when you're trying to build it right. You might need drywall. You might need paint. You might need books if you're in school. You might need a business plan when you want to start a business. You might need a resume when you're trying to get a job. You might need flyers if you're trying to promote. You might need pen and paper if you're trying to write. You might need a computer if you're trying to do something on the internet. Amen? Amen. You need to have your materials. Be ready. Be ready for the opportunity. Don't wait for the opportunity to get ready, but be ready so you don't have to get ready. The second thing he had did was to build the outside. Turn to your neighbor and say, building the outside. Building the outside. Solomon picked out the right place. Mount Moriah, where God appeared to David. He picked a place that was special. We don't just go around and, and, and say, well, I just, I'm just going to turn around, close my eyes, and spin around, and point on the map, and that's where I'm going to go. He picked a special place. Okay, he picked a special, special place that was important to God. There was a pattern. He looked at the footsteps of his leader. His leader was his father, and he did what he saw his father do. Can you follow the leader? Ask your neighbor, can you follow the leader? Can you follow the leader? Can you finish what they started? Sometimes your leader cannot finish what they started. They were only here to start. They were not here to finish, but you are here to finish. So you have a significant role. You're here to finish what mommy started. You're here to finish what daddy started. You're here to finish what auntie started. You're here to finish what uncle started. You have to finish it. That's your role. David gathered all the materials, and he put it and said, you know what, I'm not allowed to build this temple. I really, really want to build this temple. Why did David... Why was not David able to do that? Because he was a man of war. He got that he had too much blood on his hands. But that means that he could not do certain things, and that means you disqualify yourself. Although God may forgive you, you may disqualify yourself from doing things and getting certain positions because you are not willing to do what God asked you to do.
do, but that's all right. God forgave you. He still was king. He still was great. He was still a great man of God, but God did not allow him to build his holy temple with his own hands. What did David do? He didn't say, well, fine then, God. If that's how it's going to be, then oh well. He did not do that. He said, well, I'm going to gather my things. My son's going to carry it out. It's still going to happen. It's my legacy. I'm going to give my son all the materials that he needs. I'm going to help anyway. What do you do when God says no? Are you going to turn your back? Are you going to say no? Well, since you said no, I'm walking away. Is it fair weather? Is it a fair weather relationship? How many people do you know that as soon as you say no to them, they out the door? They don't have nothing to do with you anymore. Try it. Try saying no to some people. No, I'm not, I can't do that. Oh, really? And they continue to try to convince you? Try. Or they say, well, fine. If this person don't want to do this, and I'm not going to be their friend anymore. They take their ball and they go home. David was forgiven, but he was also restricted. He also was excluded. But God is looking for someone with a great reputation for certain positions. You don't believe me? You try being a murderer and try to run for president. You think they're going to forgive you? I did my time. I might have killed that man, but I'm going to be president. But God will forgive you. Because didn't Moses kill somebody? He sure did. But was he not almost like the president of the people at the time? He was a leader. So that just shows you right there that God allows certain things for, for you to do certain things that man won't even allow you to do. People won't allow you to do that. Child molesters can't be teachers, can they? Can't do certain things and then they won't get a position. But God, you forgave me. You can't work at a bank after you went to jail for armed robbery. Sometimes God needs somebody with a great reputation. It's nothing personal. It's just he has to handle his business. That's just the way it is sometimes. But David did not give up hope. David left the legacy. Are you leaving a legacy for your life, for your family, for your generation? Just forget about you. What about your, the people your age? What about the people that, that need some hope? They need somebody to look up to. Are you willing to be different? Are you willing to raise your hand and say, choose me, Lord? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to be different so that somebody has somebody to follow, so they have some kind of hope, but they are not in your position, they would want to be in your position, but now that you have the position, what are you gonna do, because they're all watching? Are you building a legacy, or are you just playing around? Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm building a legacy. Building a legacy. David gave his son some of what he did, needed, but that's what parents do. That's what, that's what leaders do. I can only give you some of what you need. I can't give you everything. David could give his best to the Lord. Even if he didn't get the job, but Solomon had to go out and get more materials. He had to get more workers. He had to finish it. It was only started. He had to finish it. How will you respond when God says no? That's the real text. How will you respond? Will you do Will you bring the materials anyway, God? I know that I can't. I'm not the one to do the job, but I'll still give. I'll still donate to the ministry. I'll still donate to the business. I'll still do this and that for that person, even though I'm not allowed to get that. But you got to know that when God says no, you get better. Say no equals better. No equals better. Next thing you got to do is build on the inside. Solomon had to build an altar. The altar is a place where a sacrifice is offered. That's a place where you go to kill things. Your heart is an altar. You kill things like jealousy. You kill things like pride. You kill things like sin. And then you offer your whole heart to God. So God has to kill some things inside of you so that you can be pure and holy and washed by the blood of Jesus. He washes away your sins so you can have a pure heart. The altar is a place where the human and the divine are connected. They interact. So when the Holy Spirit convinced you that you did something wrong and you feel guilty, that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. People come to church and say, I'm not going there because I feel guilty. It's good that you feel guilty because what's worse than feeling guilty? Feeling nothing. 